Hey, my name is Sandy, and me and my family have a travel vlog called Trying Something New. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's pretty cool. We travel the world with our three little kids, they're six, eight, and ten, and over the years we have found some really cool travel hacks that I think you might like. So here we go. <laughs> Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna have some bonus travel apps. You don't wanna miss it. Okay, my first travel hack is TSA PreCheck. So if you haven't heard of that, you know how when you get to the airport, you have three kids in tow, all the luggage, the dreaded security line, which is probably a thousand people deep, you know that when you get there, the stress comes on. You have to take all the kids' shoes off, everything out of Roy's pockets, take the laptops out, the liquids out, our belts off. All right, let's get out of here, Ryder. It's just stressful. And then, not to mention, when you get to the other side, you have to put it all back on as quickly as possible because everybody's waiting behind you. TSA PreCheck eliminates all of that. It's amazing. My friend recommended it a while ago, and since then, we haven't looked back. It's $85 a person for the adults. Kids 12 and under are free. So you just pay for the two adults. You guys go through, they come with, no shoes off. Laptops stay in the bags, liquid stay in the bags. It's easy breezy, you're gonna love it. Another hack that is amazing, especially for the kids, is getting exercise before getting on the plane. So if you have an hour to kill before you're waiting for the plane to come, Go to maybe an empty gate where there's not so many people, where you have room to run, and let those kids run. You race them, make a game out of it, time them. Do whatever you can, maybe for about 20 minutes or so, because you'll be surprised when you get on the plane. The kids will be relaxed, you'll be relaxed, even the adults too. We could get exercise. I will race my kids and get that exercise out because I know when I get on the plane, we have a 15-hour flight coming up, and a 15-hour flight is just not fun. But if you get yourself relaxed because you got some energy out, it might be a little smoother, easier to fall asleep, I'm gonna try it. A hack that the kids love is making a surprise bag for them. So typically what we did before was they'd pack their own little backpack of their favorite stuff, whatever. But for some reason, we'd get on the plane, they'd open their backpack and be like, eh, whatever, I'm just gonna watch movies the whole time. So what we've come up with is they don't get to open this bag until they get on the plane in their seat and they're so excited because they don't know what's in this bag. So you get what, a bunch of books and flashcards and activity books. Secret! So I like to have them do something before they get heavy into the movies and surprise them and they just have a great time. This one is huge. Making sure all of your electronic devices are fully charged and stocked with either music, movies, books, whatever you're into, make sure you have all of that taken care of a few days before you're leaving because we've done it where last minute, the night before, we're trying to download movies and oh my God, we don't have anything. So if you take care of that a week before and then the night before, make sure everything is charged, you will be able to go the distance with electronics, everything you need to keep the kids busy and also, have a battery pack, a charger. So the one that we have, which I'll have in the link below, is it can charge, I think, iPhone up to five times and iPads like two times. So one little battery pack can charge all of that, which is amazing because not every, not every airport you're gonna find the plugs, you're gonna find everything to take care of that. So if you come prepared with that battery pack, you'll be good to go until you get to your destination. So a few things to make sure you have in your carry-on when you get on the plane is a change of clothes for every person. For the kids, maybe because they might have an accident, something might happen. For the adults, because what's happened to us when we went to Thailand, our luggage was lost for two days. So our luggage did not make it. So we won't get it till Tuesday. So this is what I'm wearing. <laughs> no iPhone chargers, no deodorant, no shorts, all sweatsuits. Hot, muggy, nasty, ugly. And it's 1.30 in the morning and I'm freaking tired. It was horrible, we were sweating, we had to buy everybody new clothes, but it would have been a little easier if at least we had one change of clothes for the temperate, the climate of the destination that you're going. So if you're going somewhere warm, make sure you have, you know, maybe a pair of shorts or whatever, something lighter so that way, no matter what happens, lost luggage, something happens to your outfit, kid throws up on you, whatever, you're good, you have a change of clothes. 
Another thing to make sure you have is either sarongs or little light blankets to have for the plane because it is always so cold. You can use them as little pillows or blankets, cover them up. The sarongs I love, we picked up a whole bunch, went to Thailand a few years ago. They're easy to roll up, take up like no space in your, in your luggage. And they are so versatile, you can use them for a head wrap, whatever it is you need, the sarongs come in handy. And when you carry five of them, you're good to go. Another thing is gum or lollipops for the kids because the takeoff and landing, the ear pressure can really get to them and we've experienced it where one of the kids is hysterically screaming, crying. I had nothing to give them. I'm like, swallow, swallow, yawn, whatever. If I had gum or, or a lollipop, some people have to suck on to sort of break that ear pressure. That would have been a game changer. Like I said earlier, the portable charger for your, all your devices, make sure you pack that in carry on so that way you have it. Okay, so this one is probably my favorite because I'm not the most organized person. And when traveling, passports stress me out. I always I have five passports to keep track of. And you know what happens if you lose a passport? It is not gonna be pretty. So I found this little guy here that holds all of your passports. Let's see, it holds all of your passports and a pen, of course. But what I've done is I initial, I put everybody's initial on the front of a passport and each slot. So once we're done going through security, whatever, I put it right back in the slot so I know exactly where everyone's passport is at all times. And this is really good because you have little slots here to put your boarding passes, luggage tickets, immigration sheet. Before I had this, stuff was everywhere. So this has been a true lifesaver. Got one. Whatever paperwork you need to keep track of, you have it here. Zip it up, shove it in, you're good. So before you fly internationally, make sure you get a few of these guys. They are a lifesaver. It's a power, it's a plug adapter. So no matter where you go around the world, you plug this guy in, let's see. And it adapts to, ah! <laughs> How do you do it? Oh, there we go. All right. So when you're in Europe, you plug this guy in and then you put your plug on that side. So it comes in really handy. We always have a ton of stuff to charge, so we wouldn't want to have to spend top dollar wherever we are getting these. So we're prepared. We have probably about five or six of these. So, um, and also a power strip. You can, get a, you can plug a power strip into here whenever you get to your destination, then you have actual multiple plugs as well. So when you're looking for your flights and hotels, make sure you are in private browser mode because I know I've done it, everybody does it. When you're searching, searching, searching for flights, you know, you're like, oh, that's a good price, but then you go back and it's a little more expensive and a little more expensive. That's because they're tracking your searches. So if you go in private browser mode, they won't be able to do that and you will, it'll be like a new user every time. My favorite sites to use for airline tickets is Skyscanner, Kayak, and Momondo. Skyscanner is great because you can look at the whole month at a glance and see what days are cheaper to fly. Um, so I bounce back between Skyscanner and Kayak and Momondo and see who's got the best price. That's pretty much what I do. That's, that's the only three sites that I use and I usually get pretty good, pretty good prices. For hotels, I have found that Agoda usually all the time has the lowest prices. I don't know why, I don't know how, but they do. So for hotels, I use Agoda, booking.com, hotels.com, Airbnb, but a little extra hack is Check the destination that you're going to. If you're going to Bali, look on Facebook and see if the neighborhood that you're going to, Changu, Ubud, see if they have sort of like villa rentals or whatnot because those, those private Facebook groups, you can usually get a way better deal than anything online. So we actually just did that recently. We got a smoking deal on a huge villa for a thousand bucks a month when it probably would be 2,000 easily on Airbnb. So if you can, or compare. If you're looking on Airbnb, compare it to what you might find on those Facebook groups. Typically those groups, there's a lot of realtors in there too, but there's a lot of homeowners that don't wanna deal with all the red tape of the Airbnb and all that, so they can just rent it out themselves. And they can pick and choose who they wanna rent it to. So it's kind of a win-win, you get a better deal, they feel comfortable with who they're renting it to, and yeah, I love it. This might be the most important hack, the most important hands down. Call your bank and credit cards and let them know your travel plans because it happened to us and that's how we learned is if you don't, your card will not work when you get to where you're going. Once again, we forgot to tell our credit card companies that we're going out of town, out of country, out of the hemisphere. 
So we just tried the ATM for the first time and it worked. Yeah, we got money! I don't know how long it is. <laughs> I better call. So make sure you call, let them know your travel plans from what date to what date you're traveling. That way there's no issues. And then when you get there, also to get local currency, you can just use the ATM. So it's super duper 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 hot outside. When you come in the ATM, they have an AC unit in here. So we come so in here and hide all the time. And I think we should probably have a dance party. by three box, it don't matter. We can still get down wherever we go. We're still gonna have fun, Whoa. no matter what. <laughs> All right. If you don't have any credit cards that have miles on them, like you earn miles for spending money on your credit card, you need to sign up right now because there's so many credit cards out there that are offering big sign-on bonuses. So if you sign up for their credit card, you might get 70,000 miles just to sign on. You spend like three, three or $4,000 in the first three months, and then boom, you get your 70,000. That's worth $700 for, play, for airline tickets. I just bought five plane tickets to Bali. It was $1,900. I had 80,000 miles on my credit card, so they awarded me back 800 and I think it was $850. So my airline tickets were literally like just about a thousand bucks for five of us to fly to Bali. Overall, it's a win-win because you're gonna have a credit card anyways, and this way you earn the miles, and you get to fly cheaper because they give you money back. Awesome. Another hack that you should make sure you do is take a picture of everyone's passport and email it to yourself. So, you know, you'd never want to lose your passport, but in case you do, at least you have a copy of it. Before you get an expensive international phone plan, look into where you're going because you can typically get super cheap data cards. All right, so we had no data yesterday and could not figure out a way to get around, so we knew today SIM cards was priority number one. So we just came, nine gigs, nine gigs each card, Six dollars each. I mean each phone. So six dollars, six dollars. We each have nine gigs now, and it was a total of twelve dollars. And just like that, no contracts, no buy-ins, no crazy stuff. You pay six bucks, you got a damn phone for a month. How cool is that? I love me. If there's no Wi-Fi around, your phone will still work, and it is way cheaper than an international plan. A really cool thing that I've discovered is these blow-up pillows that fit in the leg space of the airplane. So for the kids, you know, they all start getting antsy and there's not enough room and the seat's only so big. So these blow up pillows extend the room that they have, their usable space now. But just make sure, I did find out that certain airlines do not allow these. Not sure why, but they don't. So just check the carrier that you're using and make sure that they are okay to use. So I haven't personally done this, but my friend did the last flight we took and she said they worked amazing. Compression socks. I can guarantee that I'm going to try them on this next trip we have coming up because I hate the feeling of restless ankles and you you know you're, you get cankles, you get all swollen. So if the compression socks, they might not be the cutest things, but if they help with that and when you get off the plane, your legs are not all kind of funky and swollen, I'm doing it. So when I'm packing for five people for a long trip, whatever, I get very stressed out because I'm trying to keep the clothes neat and organized and everybody's got their own little area, but somehow it all becomes a mess and then everybody is just trying to dig through, trying to find their clothes. I get, I don't like it. So I have found packing cubes and holy crap, they work. They're amazing. Everybody gets their own cube. It really has like changed my life <laughs> with packing. So how I do it is I roll everybody's clothes and I put on one side and the other, I put all shirts and all, all bottoms, whether it's shorts, pants, whatever, roll them super tight, and then it's all organized, zip it up, and each person has all of their clothes in a cube. So here are some travel apps that I found that work really good, and you, the easiest way to organize them in your phone is to start a travel folder in your phone, put all the apps in there, that way you're not searching through your phone trying to figure it out. I know my phone has a million games on it from my kids, so I would never find the app when I need it. So the easiest thing is put them in a folder, travel folder, whatever you want to name it, and there you go, it's your go-to. The first app I have is XE Currency. Get that baby on your phone because that is a lifesaver. No matter where you are, we were in China one time, ordered breakfast, the kids got orange juice, I didn't have my, my, that app in my phone, and I, the, we got the bill and I go, that seems like a lot, but I didn't know because I didn't have the app. So then I ended up looking it up when I connected to Wi-Fi and it turns out each orange juice was $12. Oh. So we spent, I don't know, 40 bucks in orange juice. If I had my app, I would not have chose the orange juice. <laughs> 
I spent $40 on orange juice the kids did not even drink. So get the app. Another one is called Flight Board. You know when you're in the airport and you're waiting for your gate to pop up or whatnot, but sometimes you just you can't find where the board is. So Flight Board is an app that will tell you where in your airport, what gate you need to go to, if there was any changes. It has been great, I love it. That way it eliminates trying to search around the airport trying to find where your gate's at. Google Translate, that's all I'm gonna say. That has been a lifesaver. Charades just, you know, sometimes just doesn't translate very well. So if you have Google Translate, that can help out your situation. Audible, if you don't have that app, get it. I have so many books on there, things that I've been wanting to listen to but I haven't had the chance. The plane is the perfect opportunity to listen to all those books you've been wanting to listen to. Another one is Speed Check. It checks the speed of the Wi-Fi wherever you are. The app even tells you the strength of the Wi-Fi and what you can do with it. Can you just check emails? Can you look on Facebook? Can you, can you actually look at some YouTube videos? So it, it's really helpful, especially if it's for work and you need to get something uploaded, downloaded, whatnot. Hotel Tonight is a great app for those sticky situations where maybe you don't have a hotel for that night. <laughs> so Hotel Tonight comes in really handy, tells you what's available in your area. Check it out. We found that no matter where we are, everyone seems to have WhatsApp. So when we were in the Philippines and we needed to connect with our driver who was gonna hook us up with the boat guy, WhatsApp came in handy, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to get in contact with him. So you can text, you can make phone calls. WhatsApp is amazing, make sure you have that one. Download Google Maps onto your phone because you might not have Wi-Fi walking around the city and whatnot. So if you download it to your phone, you never have to get lost in another country. So I hope you enjoyed my travel hacks wherever you are around the world. I hope they become useful. I know they've been huge in my life. And if you have any of your own travel hacks, please put them down below because I'm always looking for new ways to make my life easier. So remember, whatever you do, get out there and try something new. If you like this episode, make sure you check out our last video where we showed what it took to pack up the RV and move to Bali. Follow us on Instagram. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to YouTube and hit that notification button. And try something!